Hello comic book guys and gals, and welcome to Comic Mag Musings. I am your host, Bill Miller. Today we are doing yet another vlog, and this one will be The Incredible Hulk, issue number four. Again, this is from the original six-issue series from the 1960s, Silver Age. I am reading these from The Essential Hulk, a Marvel trade paperback book that reprints these as well as many of the Tales to Astonish issues. This particular volume is a first print from 1999. So, turn the volume up just a hair, turn the lights down just a smidgen, Sit back, relax, and let your imagination paint the pictures as we read The Incredible Hulk, issue number four. And on the cover, we have, under the trade dress, a two, a, a two different panels, two big panels. One says the monster in the machine, where the Hulk is on some type of... Uh, patient chair, having machines uh, aimed at him for some sort of experiment, and he's breaking through chains that had him chained down. And the other has him in the desert, and it says, Mongu, gladiator from space. Fantasy as you like. So this is the Incredible Hulk in The Monster and the Machine. In a silent, secret laboratory, a tense teenager adjusts a complex ray machine over the head of the most incredible living creature on the face of the earth. And, as he does so, Rick Jones mutters to himself, I've never operated this machine before. One mistake, and it can mean death for the Hulk, and maybe for me too. But I've got to try it. No matter what, I've got to do it. If this works, the Hulk may change back to... Dr. Bruce Banner again, and if it doesn't work, then it will be the end for us all. The rays have reached critical mass. I've got to pull the lever now. But how did it all start? Let us go back, back into time. Miles away, days before Rick Jones's trembling fingers pulled the fatal lever, another actor on Destiny's stage also is thinking of Dr. Bruce Banner. For here we find Betty Ross, unable to get the handsome, brooding scientist out of her mind or her heart. It seems only yesterday when I first met Bruce, before the horror of the Hulk came between us. How thrilled I was when my father introduced us on that fateful day of the Gamma Bomb test. Betty, this is Dr. Bruce Banner, the man who created the Gamma Bomb. It's a pleasure to find that America's most famous scientist is also so young and handsome. You're too kind, Miss Ross. And then, seconds before the bomb was due to be detonated, Bruce left the safety of his bunker to drive madly into the test area. I don't know how that teenage boy got out there, but I've got to save him before the blast. Yes, he saved the boy, but what a price he paid for it. For when he returned, after having been exposed to the awesome gamma rays, Bruce Banner seemed somehow different, as though he carried a frightening secret Locked within, locked within him. It's, it says locked, but it's supposed to say locked. Um, I imagine that's, uh, that's an error from the original issue. Please, Miss Ross, stay out. Stay out. Perhaps it was just a coincidence, but it was just about that same time that the hope first appeared, like a living engine of destruction. To this very day, no one knows where he came from, nor how, nor why. But for some unexplainable reason... He never tried to harm me. It was as though he was trying to tell me something. But then I fainted. The troops saw him and the hunt was on. When I recovered, the towering monster had brought me to Bruce's lab. I looked around in shocked surprise. The place was a shambles. But before anything else could happen, Rick Jones suddenly dashed in. Oh, stop! And this is the most incredible fact of all. Only that one, only that one young teenager 
and all the world is able to control the superhuman Hulk. Back, Hulk? You must go back. Go back. Rick Jones and Bruce Banner. Rick Jones and the Hulk. What connection is there between all of them? Somehow, in some mysterious way, Rick Jones holds the key. It has to be Rick Jones. I've got to tell Dad, if he can find Rick Jones, perhaps we'll be able to learn what has happened to the missing Bruce Banner. That's it, boys. Get the iceberg rocket set for its test firing. And so she's running toward her father, who is ordering around some troops to set up an experimental test rocket. Stay back, Betty. This is the weapon which will someday capture the Hulk for us. Watch. Ready on the firing line. Follow plan B. Release the jet-powered facsimile of the Hulk. Yes, sir. Fire facsimile. <laughs> it's the Hulk. No, it's just an artificial jet-powered copy to use as a test target. Now watch what happens. And it shows uh, a figure of the Hulk with a uh, rocket blast coming from his feet as he's flying through the air. There goes the iceberg rocket after its prey. Why do you call it an iceberg rocket, Dad? <clears throat> You'll see in a second. There, it released a sudden burst of a special chemical. A chemical which instantly turns into a solid cake of ice. The iceberg did it. It brought down the facsimile Hulk. And that's just the way we'll get the real Hulk if we ever get our sights on him. And now, my dear, what was it you wanted to tell me? Oh, Dad, it's about the Hulk and Rick Jones. I'm sure that Bruce Banner's disappearance is tied in with both of them. Bruce might be injured or a prisoner or worse. Bah, I've got more to worry about than one missing scientist, and a troublesome scientist at that. Dad, if you can find Rick Jones, you'll not only find Dr. Banner, but you might find the Hulk as well. I'm sure that the, I'm sure that the boy knows the answer to the riddle of the Hulk. Hmm. Maybe there's something in what you say. I'll do anything to destroy that monster once and for all. Attention, all personnel. General Ross speaking. Find Rick Jones. Top priority. Over and out. And even as the order is barked out, Rick Jones speaks to the silent, unmoving Hulk. We can't go on this way much longer. I've got to find a way to change you back to Dr. Bruce Banner before it's too late for both of us. No wonder no one has suspected the truth yet. Even though I know it, it's hard for me to believe you. You're, it's hard for me to believe you yourself are Dr. Banner, changed into a monster by a strange miracle and subject only to my command. On the double, men, surround the house. Rick Jones may be inside. The general wants him alive. Troops, they found me, but they mustn't find the Hulk. Then, at a sudden command from his young master, the mightiest living thing on earth makes a fantastic leap, powered by muscles so powerful that he seems to be flying. Go, Hulk, go! Up, up, up! Seconds later, Strange, I could have sworn I saw so sort of figure go flying by. Better not mention it to anyone. They'll think I've flipped. What do you guys want? General, Th General Thunderbolt Ross will explain. Come with us. And then at the General's headquarters. Now hear this, Jones. Dr. Banner has been missing for days, and we suspect that his disappearance has something to do with you. If he doesn't show up soon, I'm placing you under arrest. He was assigned to my command, and I've got complete authority in this matter. Rick, if you know what's happened to Bruce, you've got to tell us. He may be in trouble. Perhaps we can help him. I've got to know. I've got to know. I'm sorry, Miss Ross. I can't tell you anything. And then thinking to himself, how can I tell them that Bruce Banner is really the Hulk? And yet, if I don't produce Dr. Banner soon, I'm going to be in big trouble. They may even accuse me of murdering him. Meanwhile, propelled by his prodigious leap, the one living creature who holds the key to the mystery of Bruce Banner zooms through the air mindlessly, aimlessly, too far from Rick Jones to receive any further mental commands. And then, as his leap begins to lose momentum, his cold, brutish eyes see a foreboding sight. And it's a school bus that's rested upon train tracks with a train coming. And the driver says, The motor stalled, can't move the bus, and the express is bearing down. Too fast for me to get the kids off. Somewhere deep within the monster's brain, a tiny spark of Bruce Banner comes to life, and then, without conscious thought, moving like a gigantic living battering ram, the Hulk takes over, performing a feat which no other living human could have accomplished. And the Hulk 
swoops in and pushes the bus off the tracks just in time to be missed by the oncoming train. The amazing incident occupied the headlines during the next 24 hours, but after that it was soon swept away by the rush of other events. Later on a movie set, not far away, No, 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 you're not hamming it up enough. This is supposed to be a monster movie. You've got to look scared. Now let's try it again. Okay, Mike, roll them. Now let's hear you really scream, kid. Eek! That's it, baby. You're doing fine. Keep it up. I never knew you could act so good. Help! Help! Holy Hannah, she wasn't acting. Let me out of here. Run for the hills, boys. And the Hulk shows up on set and he's smashing things. Minutes later, at the studio commissary a short distance away, Stop shoving back here. I was first in line. Come on, keep the line moving. Who's next? Food. I'm through with show business. It's back to the hash house for me. And the Hulk grabs a huge pot of some sort of soup or goulash and starts uh, consuming it as the food server runs out of there in a hurry. But then after the panic subsides, Surround them. Don't let them get away. We can make the greatest monster movie of all time with that thing. S- something tells me he ain't gonna cotton up to the idea. Suddenly, unexpectedly, the mighty Hulk brings his enormous hands together in a mind-staggering thunderclap. <clears throat> Louder than a jet plane's sonic boom, the awesome explosion stuns the startled men into helplessness as the most powerful pair of legs on Earth again catapult the Hulk into the sky. On and on, his prodigious leap carries him into the very heart of the metropolis when a faint, faraway thought reaches his clouded brain. Hulk! Hulk, I need you. This is Rip. Come to me, Hulk. Follow the trail of my thought. And not long afterwards, as Rick is being taken to an army prison under guard, he ought to be here by now. Hey, Charlie, what's that in the rearview mirror? Where? I don't see any. Wait, now I see it. No. No, it can't be. And they see the Hulk flying at them through the rearview mirror. It was the Hulk. He got the boy. And he grabs Rick and jumps off into the sky. Like a human catapult, the Hulk soars through the air with his teenage burden until he reaches a familiar location. This is it, Hulk. Down. Put me down. Slowly, carefully, the creature and the boy enter a hidden cave and noiselessly proceed through the dimly lit cavern. Follow me, Hulk. It's just a little further. Lucky for us, you built this hidden lab while you were still Bruce Banner. It's my only chance to clear myself now, and to bring you back to normal, too. Well, there it is. The machine you built to bombard you with gamma rays. The only problem is, am I smart enough to figure out how it starts? I can't even understand half of the jazz you wrote in this instruction manual. If only you could help me. If I make a mistake, anything can happen. Hulk, try to think. Somewhere in the head of yours, the spark of Bruce Banner must still be listening. Tell me, Hulk. Should I take the chance? Should I try? You've got to tell me. Try, Rick. And so we return to the present and the most dangerous experiment ever attempted by a 16-year-old boy. If I give him too much juice, we'll both be blitzed. And if I don't give him enough, anything might happen. But I've got to do it. So the machine gets shut on. The rays have reached critical mass. I've got to pull the lever now. This is it. It's working. He's Bruce Banner again. Got to stop the rays now. And so we see a sequence of panels within which the Hulk changes back into Dr. Bruce Banner. But Rick Jones' unskilled hands fumble for an instant over the delicate controls, and by the time the gamma rays are finally extinguished, I was too slow. He got too big a dose of rays. Doc, Doc, say something. Suffering, snakes, what do I do now? He's still breathing. He's moving here. Doc, take a swig of this tonic. Weak, hard to move. What happened? Minutes later, this is nutty. An hour ago, you were the strongest guy on earth, and now i got to push you around in this wheelchair, all because I goofed on that ray gizmo. Not your fault, Ray. You're not a scientist. I'm lucky to be myself again, no matter what. But I can't remain helpless this way. There's too much to be done. If only, if only I could have the Hulk's strength in my own brain. Rick, wheel me to the ray machine. Hurry. What are you going to do, Doc? 
it's one chance in a hundred, but by making some delicate adjustments and setting the dials myself, I may be able to regain the Hulk's body, but with my own intelligence. Stay back, Frank. I'm activating the machine. Gosh, Doc. You juggle those dials like a whiz. Hey, you're changing again. It worked. You're the Hulk again, but do you have Bruce Banner's <laughs> Bruce Banner's brain? He's getting up, and I didn't will him to. I, I've lost control over him. What if he's as dangerous as, as before? If I can't control him, I'll be a goner. Stay back, Hulk. Stop. It's no use. He's out of control. I'm cooked. Rick. Rick, you wonderful, loyal, empty-headed kid. I did it. The ray works. I have the Hulk's body, the Hulk's strength, but I can still think like Bruce Banner. Man, that's the coolest. Do you know what this means, Rick? Do you realize what I can accomplish? With my brain and the Hulk's strength, I can do anything. Anything! Ha 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 ha! And he picks up the machine and swings it around. I've arranged the controls so that I can work them myself. I can change back to Bruce Banner anytime I want to. I'm worried. He seems to have Dr. Banner's brain, but he sounds fiercer, crueler. He still seems dangerous. A short time later, Rick follows the Hulk as the mighty human monster prowls the countryside, reveling in his matchless power. Can you imagine how it feels, kid? I fear nobody, nothing. I'm exploding with energy. I can't get tired. Look, over there. That cabin's on fire. Gosh, there's the family trapped inside. And we see inside the cabin. Don't cry, Bobby. We'll get out somehow. A mother holding one of her children. And there's another child nearby. The smoke is blinding me. Can't see, can't breathe. Without a second thought, the Incredible Hulk grasps the section of the cabin which is in flame and gives it one mighty tug. Stand back, kid. There, that's one way of putting out a fire. There, there, children, don't cry. The fire is out. We're all safe now. I don't understand. It happened so fast. The wall, it just vanished. It didn't vanish, Sonny. I got rid of it for you. Eek! Good heavens! Help! Hearing the cries, a local deputy races onto the scene to find... I, I saw a mass of flaming debris fly through the air, and then... Oh, look! <clears throat> I'll be blamed. It's that monster they've been broadcasting an alarm on radio about. I'll give you... The brainless idiots, they're shooting at me. Save a man's family and they shoot at you. Come on, Rick, we're taking off. That's right, send out an all-points alarm. The Hulk is in the area someplace. No one will be safe until he's found and destroyed. He, he's even more terrifying than I heard he was. We better head back to the hidden lab, Hulk. Where do you think I'm going? I'm sick of being shot at and hounded. Here, I rigged up this gadget, so all I gotta do is step on these buttons and activate the gamma ray. They can look for the hope from now till doomsday, but they'll never find me. And once again, the awesome rays weave their magic on the being who stands before them. Boy, Doc, it's a relief to have you back again. As you, that hope was beginning to even scare me. Can't talk, Rick. Tired. Very tired have to rest the gamma rays can keep changing too often not too quickly rays are too strong must rest now tired tired sure doc go ahead grab yourself some shut eye and then thinking even though the whole now has my brain he is still a raging goliath Still hard to control. I pray he never turns on me. We're on mankind. But mustn't tell Rick. Mustn't worry the boy. So much to think about. So much to do. And then also in thought is Rick as he shuts, shuts the light off. Go on and sleep, Doc. You've earned it. I know you're worried. I know the Hulk is still the problem. But I'll see it through with you to the end. I swear it, Doc. No matter what. And now we have The Gladiator from Space, starring the Hulk, Bruce Banner, and Rick Jones. It landed suddenly unexpectedly, swooping down from the skies without warning. 
we see a series of panels of some sort of airships landing gear coming down and then it came to rest slowly the startled onlookers inched closer and closer what is it where did it come from until without warning look it it's opening up stay back no telling what's inside that thing it must be a creature from another world I am Mongo. And the creature comes out of this spaceship as he announces that. At that moment, in another part of town, Rick Jones turns on his TV set and, Doc, hey, Doc, look at this. Some kind of monster just landed in the park. I should be the last one to call anyone else a monster, Rick. Who is he? Where did he come from? Listen. I have come to Earth to issue a challenge. I challenge Earth's mightiest mortal to meet me in hand-to-hand -hand combat. If your champion defeats me, I shall depart forever. But if Mongu is victorious, then Earthlings beware, for then the warriors of my world will attack this puny planet and conquer it without mercy. Send me a champion who can weld a two... I think they meant wield. Who can wield a two-ton axe like me. I shall await your champion in a lonely part of Grand Canyon. If no one arrives before the sun sets, I shall know none dare to meet me, and the attack will begin. This is the final word of Mongu. Then, without further ado, the strange unearthly craft rises into the air and heads towards Grand Canyon, as the watching multitudes hardly dare to draw a breath. No human on earth can defeat that brute. <clears throat> wow, was that cat for real? What do you make of it, Doc? I don't know, Rick, but one thing is for sure, if he is for real, then there is only one creature on Earth who has a chance of defeating him. Hey, you mean you're going to... Stay back, Rick. Back. Look out for the rays. Oh, it's working. I, I'm changing. And now, Mongo has a date with the Hulk. Don't just stand there, kid. Get moving. I may need you. Sh sure, Hulk, sure. Within minutes, a hastily chartered twin jet streaks toward the Grand Canyon and one of the strangest adventures of all time. After long, anxious minutes, look, there he is. Ha, huh, so, one has been foolhardy enough to accept Mongo's challenge. And this after Rick and the Hulk land and depart their airplane. Just wait till he gets better look at you, Hulk. It is you. It is the one I've been waiting for. You expected me? Something smells fishy about all this. Give me that club. Just like I figured, nothing but cardboard or cork. The whole thing is a phony. Mongo is indeed a phony, but there is nothing phony about your plight. You have fallen into my trap, you see. I am not alone. Take him, men. An alien from outer space, ha, how easy it was to deceive you. My true name is Boris Monguski, and my real mission is to capture you as I have done. I shall bring you back behind the Iron Curtain with me. There, our greatest scientists will learn the secret of your great strength and build for us a whole army of such warriors as you. What do we do? You can't lick a whole platoon of these cats. Look at all the hardware they're carrying, Hulk. Shut your yap. And listen to me, I'm going to polarize these crumbs. When I give the word, lie flat and cover your ears. Now get out of my way. This is the Hulk whispering to Rick. All right, comrades, if you want me, come and get me. Suddenly, moving with blinding speed, which seems impossible for one so huge, the Incredible Hulk leaps into the air. Shoot him. Now, Rick, now. He, he is coming down again. Why? He moves so fast, we cannot hit him. Striking the earth like a mighty meteor, the Hulk causes an explosion of unimaginable intensity. <sighs> I'll just scoop up their toys while they're listening to the bells ringing in their dumb heads. Good thing you held your ears like I warned you, kid. Hulk, look out! One of them has a live grenade! Yeah, well, what do you know? The Hulk catches it and... <sighs> it detonates in his hand. Do those commies think they're playing with kids? But unknown to the Hulk, one of the Reds has remained inside the strange ship, and now it is good that we prepared this ear-splitting sound gun in case our other weapons failed. 
Although it doesn't affect normal ears, the ultrasonic sound waves prove torturous to the supersensitive ears of the whole. <laughs> but the brilliant brain of Dr. Banner, combined with the tremendous power and strength of the Hulk's body, finds a sudden escape. As two sledgehammers, two sledgehammer fists beat a hole into the rock hard ground below. Then, with the breathtaking speed, the mightiest mortal on earth burrows beneath the surface, where the ultrasonic sound waves cannot penetrate his eardrums. And seconds later, a fearsome figure emerges directly into the red ship. Now it is my turn. What? No, stop. Help! Once the agonizing sound is stilled, the Hulk ignores the lone human as he begins to tear the ship apart with his bare hands. It isn't a spaceship. It's nothing more than a disguised Meg. He isn't human. Nothing can stop him. But the wily Reds still have another ace in their hole. Hulk, give yourself up. We win after all. We have the boy. He must surrender, or your life is forfeit. No, Hulk, don't worry about me. Pulverize these creeps. You fools, you're all trapped here. Your plane is wrecked. There's no way you can escape. Hurting that kid won't help you. Yes, we can. Here comes our helicopter. We had it hidden in the hills. That will be our means of escape, with you as our prisoner. Guess again, loudmouth. That bird's gonna get its wings clipped right now. Before any of the Reds can move a muscle, the mighty Hulk hurls a piece of the wreck Meg skyward toward the hovering ship. Skimming through the air like a whirling blade, it severs the helicopter's landing gear, making further descent impossible. That takes care of that. Now I can finish off these commies without any more interruptions. But there is a limit to the frustrations which any man can endure, even communists. And so, take him. We give up. Stay back. Do not harm us. We are your prisoners. Take off all your belts. What, what is he doing? Tying us together with our own belts, but why? This is why, comrades, because you're taking a little trip. <laughs> and he's got them all tied with one huge belt lasso, and he's leaping with them, pulling them behind him. And now he's going, okay, and he's landed on the helicopter, and he's tying the helicopter. I'll tie you on to the tow cable of this egg beater, and you can join your little playmates inside. I'm leaving you now. But if you're not on the way back to Vodka Land, by the time I hit Earth, I'll be back, and I won't be so easy on you next time. Hulk, you did it. You did it. They're gone. What did you expect, Hand Half Pint? I wasn't playing for fun. A few hours later, the once deserted plateau is a beehive of activity. The spaceship was nothing but a camouflaged mig. The alien was a phony suit in which a normal man was concealed. The whole thing was just one gigantic hoax. And this is the military um, inspecting the scene. We found footprints and fingerprints that can only belong to the Hulk. He's involved in this somehow. Is General Ross. The whole thing must be his doing. He wanted us to think that he defeated a menace from space. He wanted to be considered a hero. Whatever the Hulk planned to accomplish by his phony scheme, it sure backfired. He didn't fool anybody. Yeah, now the army wants to get him more than ever. He won't be able to escape old Thunderbolt Ross much longer. See two people just shooting the breeze in the city while a newspaper is displayed that says Battle with Space Gladiator Rigged by Hulk. Public taken in by brazen hoax. But miles away in a hidden cave beneath the sea, one of the world's most fantastic transformations is again taking place as the angry, powerful, brutal Hulk subjects himself to the mysterious gamma rays which he had discovered when he was Dr. Bruce Banner. And then, slowly, the massive door swings open and a weary scientist staggers out. It's over for now. You came it through it okay. I was beginning to get worried about you. Boy, it sure is hard to believe that you were the strongest Joe on Earth just a little while ago. Let me lean on your shoulder, Rick. I'm, I'm tired. So tired. And so the world's most amazing human, the boy who shares his awesome secret, slowly walk out in the light of day, hoping to have a long breathing, <laughs> a long breathing spell, a long rest, before the Incredible Hulk comes to light again. And that is the end of issue number four. 
I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, I would encourage you to subscribe and hit the notification bell. That way you're alerted as soon as I release new recordings. Thumbs up and comments are always appreciated. And remember, we're taking over the world one comic book at a time.